Hello, I am Mike Beckfar, and today I would like to talk a little bit about clown makeup and designing a clown face that works for you. When I was getting started as a clown, several of my friends recommended I buy a copy of Struder's Complete Guide to Clown Makeup by Jim Roberts. This is one of the first books that I purchased about being a clown, and it explains a lot of different aspects of designing a face that looks for you. It goes into the details of three basic types of clown, the white face clown, the goose clown, and the tramp clown. The white face clown, as the name would imply, covers the entire face with white makeup. The goose clown mixes both white makeup, usually around the eyes and the mouth, with a flesh tone covering the rest of the face. And a hobo tramp uh, makeup design would have a white mouth, representing where they wipe their mouth on their sleeve to keep it clean, and white around the eyes where they wipe their eyes, and then a, usually a dark beard and some sunburn off on the rest of their face. And this book will give you ideas of designs that will work for how to draw a mouth that will work for your clown character, and also how to draw eyebrows and accents around your eyes. And also it'll tell you a little bit about working with the use of makeup and how to powder when it's done. One important aspect of designing a clown face is understanding your own face. You have to understand the muscles of your face and the bone structure of your face and where things move when you try to show your expression. A clown face is not designed to hide your face, but to accentuate your face. A traditional American clown working in a circus was, was trying to reach an audience who was sitting in the back row and they should be able to see who was making a bigger expression. Today, a modern American clown or hometown clown is going to be interacting with their audience at a much closer level. They may have children seated in the living room where their audience is about the same distance from me as the camera is. Or they may be working in a parade where people are 20 feet away. Or they may be working in a hospital or nursing home where they're interacting one-on-one, -on -one, real close, with a child or an adult. In each one of those situations, the basics of what works for clown makeup is the same, but the boldness of the makeup design is going to vary. If you're working in a stadium, you're probably going to use thicker, bolder lines. If you're working close up one-on-one -on -one with someone, you probably going to have a simpler, more subdued makeup style because they're able to see you a lot closer. So when you're designing your face, it's also important to understand where your muscles move. So as I, when I look in the mirror, I can see my eyebrows raise. And I can see sort of, at this point, my finger is moving up and down with my eyebrows. So if I draw an eyebrow there, it's going to move with my facial muscles. If I draw my eyebrow too high up, it really won't move, so it will not carry the emotions that I'm making to an audience who's seated farther away. So when you're designing a clown face, you want to spend some time looking in the mirror and seeing how your face reacts, and where, what muscles of your face move when you make expressions. So when you raise your eyes, How do your eyebrows respond? You want your clown eyebrows to respond and really carry the emotions and the expressions that you're making. The same thing uh, with your face and your mouth. You want your mouth to depict the emotions so that people can see the expressions that you're making. the makeup should respond and should help transmit the expressions and the emotions that you're making. So it's important to spend some time looking at your face in the mirror and seeing, try out a makeup design and, and then just sort of watch and see, does that makeup work for you and help people to understand and see 
your face more clearly from a distance. Maybe you're going to put on some glasses. And how does that interact with your face? It's going to cover up part of your facial features. So can people still see the expressions through the glasses that you're wearing? Maybe you'll put on a hat or a wig, and that will further cover parts of your face. And how does that fit in with you and your clown character? Not every design is going to work for every person. So you have to sometimes try two or three designs and refine it every time you put on the face. Maybe something needs to be tweaked just a little bit. So this is Mike Bethvar, also known as Sir Tuni Van Dukes. I hope you uh, learned a little bit about putting on clown makeup. Thank you.